Hello everyone, this is Powell Ponder on Weather coming at you with another update. In this update, we're talking about flooding rains, extreme winds, severe weather, and much colder temperatures and a snowstorm. So before I do get started, if you do like weather related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. And I do ask you to share this video with your friends and family on social media. All right, so let's get started. Here is the latest uh, watches and warnings uh, as of this morning. We got a lot to talk about. It is March the 28th. And we've got some very high wind watches and warnings taking place right now into Washington and Oregon, the entire state of Idaho and uh, Montana getting into Wyoming. That'll swing into Nebraska today. So some very high winds up in the, in the Pacific Northwest. But we're dealing with some extreme flooding into uh, Tennessee, guys. They had some almost catastrophic flooding uh, last night in Nashville, anywhere up to 8 to 10 inches that fell overnight. Uh, so much of Tennessee is under uh, flash flood watches and warnings currently right now. And those extreme winds continue to hang on uh, for the Northeast today. So we have a very uh, active time in the weather department to talk about. Here's your latest uh, satellite uh, picture as of this morning. You can definitely see where all the rain is um, right now. That's extending into uh, Mississippi and Alabama. It was a very active night over much of the Southeast as well as uh, the Tennessee Valley getting into K Kentucky here. That just extends up into the mid-Atlantic states uh, today into West Virginia, getting into parts of uh, the Carolinas as well as uh, Virginia. They're going to be under that severe threat uh, later on today. And even parts of uh, Pennsylvania could see, say, a, a marginal risk that we'll kind of talk about as uh, we go throughout this uh, segment here. But here's the latest just 24-hour rainfall. I mean, look at the look at the map here. This is just the last uh, 24 hours through March the 28th as of 7 a.m., and look at the bullseye over here by uh, Knoxville, as well as uh, Nashville, Tennessee. They picked up anywhere from 8 to 10 inches uh, just in the last uh, 24 hours. So that is an extreme amount of rainfall. Uh, you can see most of the rain uh, missed out in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, but just to the east. I mean, they had some large tornadoes in East Texas last night, and that extended through uh, Arkansas, got into Mississippi and Alabama. So it was a very uh, active night, not only in tornadoes and severe weather, but also flooding rains they had to deal with. This is just the last uh, 24 hours, and even a good two to four inch swath. But there's your bullseye uh, over Tennessee here. So... Let me kind of walk you through the maps and kind of tell you what's going to happen just over the next several days. That This storm will continue pushing further east uh, later on today, getting into uh, extreme portions of the southeast here. That'll extend into the eastern part of the U.S., going to Carolinas, going into the Virginias, going into Pennsylvania, even into, into New Jersey, uh, running up the coast here as that, co that continues to uh, push. And as it continues to push, unfortunately, we're going to have to be dealing with that severe weather threat now over Virginia, where they've upgraded to an enhanced risk from yesterday. So if if you live in Norfolk, if you live in uh, Chesapeake, uh, Virginia, uh, uh, Newport, New Newport News, get into Hampton, all those areas are going to be under the gun for the uh, possibility of, of tornadoes, uh, high winds, as well as a hail threat uh, later on today. And then even on the outskirts to get into Baltimore, uh, Charlotte, Washington, D.C., even into Virginia Beach and Atlanta, you're still going to be under that slight risk. So you're still going to be under the gun for that severe weather threat uh, later on today as it taps into that very warm sector out ahead of it which has had a history of producing a lot of severe weather uh, out ahead of it. So you're going to be under the gun uh, later on today. And then even a marginal risk for much of the Southeast getting into parts of uh, Pennsylvania, getting into uh, Jersey, Philly, uh, places like that are still going to be dealing with some isolated impacts from storms into isolated severe threat uh, later on today. I kind of zoomed in to the uh, different segments here uh, for, for the East. And you can definitely see the highest threat is going to be a wind threat is this might transition to say bow echoes straight line winds downburst winds microburst uh, these quick you know 60 70 mile per hour pushes of, of some of them could be collapsing thunderstorms out ahead of you but could do just as much damage as an ef0 uh, tornado uh, so this area is going to be under the gun for those extreme winds and uh, an isolated uh, tornado threat uh, even a 5% could be, uh, you know, impacted on your areas. So 
you you definitely have a, a threat later on today as you go into uh, these areas into Atlanta, getting into uh, uh, portions of the Carolinas as well as Virginia is going to be uh, under the gun for that uh, higher wind threat. Then you have a hell threat, and then you also have that tornado threat too. So. But that will continue uh, pushing off uh, the coast, and that and by by tonight that'll be all all clear off the off the coast and back behind it. We've got some colder air starting to push down uh, from the north. This would be Monday the 29th. We do see a little bit of a snow uh, in portions of Vermont and New Hampshire. I, I am expecting Maine to pick up a little bit of snow uh, from this as our attention turns out to the Pacific Northwest here, where yet another system is going to be coming, diving down, bringing more snow for you guys in uh, Idaho uh, by, by Monday, getting into Montana as this continues to push uh, further into uh, the central U.S. And by Monday, That'll continue to push a little bit further north. The, the, the warmer air stays intact for Texas and the southeast, much of the Ohio Valley getting into the northeast, while that colder push of air starts to penetrate uh, the Pacific Northwest and starts to dive down. You can definitely see the blue lines here where that's, that cold sector, that cold pocket is going to be uh, mixing in, unfortunately, would possibly set up another uh, severe weather threat uh, down down to the south here. So let's look at the temperatures by Tuesday. So this is kind of tell you the big story here. There's that push of colder air. We're talking teens. Yeah, teens in much of Washington and Oregon, get into Nevada, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming here, get into Colorado, much of the Dakotas, teens, I mean, single digits up north. So this is definitely some colder air as we end March up in Canada. And you can definitely see down here in the south, 50s and 40s, uh, hang on while they're waiting for that colder push uh, to arrive in those parts. By the end of the month, here's the 31st. So as the 31st arrives, yeah, that colder push, there's that clash in temperatures again. So yeah, that could set the stage for possibly yet another uh, severe weather event uh, getting into portions of eastern Texas, maybe portions of Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, and Alabama, unfortunately, Tennessee and Kentucky again as that colder push will meet those warm that warm sector again and there's that clash that we're going to be dealing with this we're talking Wednesday the 31st could be yet a into the under the gun again for some more uh, se severe weather here's your temperatures uh, by then so there's your colder push down down from the northwest uh, continues to push those those freezing temperatures a little bit further south getting into New Mexico getting even into portions of the Texas panhandle uh, getting into portions of Kansas here for much of the central uh, U.S. well below uh, freezing as that warm air continues to hang on uh, for the deep south and and the southeast and by the time we get into Wednesday, there's that severe threat that I kind of talked about and hinted at. Yeah, we could be under the gun for more severe activity for East Texas, going into Louisiana, going into places in Arkansas, getting into uh, Mississippi here, as we could be under the gun by March 31st for yet another system with that clash in temperatures again that we've seen so prominent over the last uh, two weeks. And unfortunately, that's going to continue uh, even into next week. So by the time we get into Thursday, here's where things get interesting because we're going to definitely have some colder air uh, pushing down uh, from the north. So as these blue lines continue to push further south into the Ohio Valley, getting into the portions of the southeast here, it's going to tap into that warm sector and also tap into some of that energy that's coming from uh, the southeast here. And that could be some a, a changeover for uh, a, a snowstorm that's going to be developing uh, for portions of the northeast. So we're talking it could be a changeover in places like West Virginia. We're even getting into uh, places in Pennsylvania now. Even Pittsburgh could see some little bit of snow kind of a changeover effect by the time we get into Wednesday night going into Thursday morning as that as that low will be off the coast by then with rain along the I-95 corridor along the coast here but in the inland and in interiors we could be looking at a changeover for snow and that just continues to intensify as we go into uh the the, the coldest time of the night going into the nighttime hours the cold you know the colder temperatures will continue uh, to press southward and we're going to see that can changeover effect continue to press a little bit further south as well so now a lot of this is going to be all snow for much of upstate new york uh, much of uh, getting into vermont new hampshire about getting into portions of uh, maine uh, by then and especially as we go into 
in the morning hours, say 6 a.m. by the time we get into April 1st. I mean, this is no April Fool's joke. This is some definitely colder air coming down from the north, and you're going to feel it in a big way. I mean, a lot of these areas, I mean, we're, I mean, we're just, we were talking, you know, record high temperatures. I mean, just, just yesterday, I mean, 82s, much of 70s and 80s all up along here. And now we're talking snow just a couple days later. So this is going to be a, a, a big impact or kind of a feels, you know, big, big difference because your body's already acclimated to the, you know, to the warmer temperatures and when you see a you know a good 40 degree drop in some of those temperatures and now we're talking snow on top of it which will even bring down some of the even colder air uh, up above yeah we're talking yeah there could be a, a, a definitely you know some, some very cold times and and, and, a, and an extreme impact on the body uh more or less as this continues to push uh, deeper into the northeast so we could be under the gun for a, a pretty good snow event uh especially in upstate uh, new york some of these places could be picking up anywhere from 8 to 12 inches in the higher elevations of uh, upstate new york get into vermont and new hampshire as well as that low just continues uh, hanging off the coast so let me show you some temperatures by then so this is why i think a lot of this will be transferring over to snow here here's your temperatures i mean you can definitely see 30s here out in the pacific northwest some 20s hanging on uh here's texas i mean we'll kind of zoom into some of these areas and there's your 20s and even below zero temperatures in southeastern Canada. So that's some that's some definitely colder air. I mean, we're talking April 1st, right? I mean, this is this is some definitely colder air for spring uh, temperatures. Let me kind of zoom into the different areas. Here's the western part of the U.S. and where you can kind of see a lot of the people um, ha have warmed recently. So this is going to be a cool a cool shot uh, as this uh, you know gets into the anywhere in the red areas or, or below freezing temperatures. You can see that extends all the way into portions of uh, New Mexico and to uh, Colorado here all up the coast here you know Nebraska get into Kansas even into Texas you're talking um, mid 30s here that's some very cold stuff and as we zoom in uh, to Texas and to Oklahoma a lot of these places could be experiencing a frost much of Missouri is below freezing Guys, much of Missouri is below freezing, even to get into Arkansas, I mean, even in the northern portions of Arkansas, you're talking below freezing temperatures as that cold air continues to press. I mean, up here in Minnesota, teens. Up here in Wisconsin here, we're talking teens. Yes, Michigan, we're talking teens. So that's some cold stuff, especially after you've been so warm lately as this continues to press south. I mean, even into Mississippi and Alabama here, getting into Georgia, mid-30s. So yeah, they're talking some definitely cold stuff. Stuff, especially after these nighttime lows have been you know mid 60s even 70 degrees so we're talking a good 30 to almost 40 degree drop and and some of these areas and as we extend into the east you can definitely see where all the red is that's your below freezing temperatures so i do think where these redder pockets are going to be that's where predominantly most of your most of your snow is going to be flying up in these areas right here where you're outlined in the 20s here so that's where i do think the snow event is going to be taking place uh for the northeast and as that continues to push off and as that colder air continues to press uh further south that'll be up the coast by midday on on uh, thursday now this is april 1st that'll be lifting some leftover changeover uh, even in the portions that cleveland could be picking up a, a dusting or, or even up to one inch ohio from this uh, storm as this continues to press but mainly it's going to be an interior upstate uh to the higher elevations event and i'm not expecting too much along the coast we'll just have to see the timing and the trajectory and how much that cold air is going to penetrate a little bit further south there's going to be a damn definitely ample amount of moisture uh, to be to work with as as well as this continues to move up the coast on friday you can definitely see back behind it now we're talking severe clear right i mean storms don't like cold weather so by the time we get into friday it's going to be really nice outside and you're going to be experiencing those springtime you know that cool cooler temperatures and if not cold in, a, in some places as well so definitely it's going to be one of those times we're going to have to uh you know bring the plants inside cover the plants or if you, if you do depending on where you live in the country 
in those areas because I kind of zoomed in by the second here. These are your temperatures. Here's your freezing temperatures along the Pacific Northwest here. It starts to modify a little bit, but even 30s along the coast here and in, into Oregon, into Washington, as well as those colder temperatures try to continue to press. We do modify a little bit as that colder air continues to shift further, further east. And let me zoom into the central U.S. You can definitely see we're not talking mid 30s here. We're talking mid 40s so that can that warmer air uh, modifies by the second for a good chunk of the central u.s where that colder push continues to push further east and now we're talking freezing temperatures in places into birmingham alabama where they've been inundated with all those tornadoes recently yeah we're talking freezing temperatures by the time we get into uh friday uh april the second here so even into the tennessee all those flooding rains we're talking freezing temperatures by the time we get into April 2nd. So this is going to be a noticeable difference into Kentucky, into Illinois, into Indiana, going into Ohio here. You know, we're talking 20s. These are actual temperatures. This isn't feels like temperatures. These are actual temperatures in the low 20s in Ohio. Much of, much of Pennsylvania is going to be in the 20s, if not the teens, where that snow is going to fly. But even down to the south here, I mean, look at Georgia. Look at Atlanta, 32 degrees. That's a freezing temperature for the deep, deep southeast for April the 2nd. So that's definitely some colder air going to be pushing uh, further to the southeast. And even Florida. I mean, look at these upper 30s for the you know, panhandle of Florida. So this is definitely a cold shot for spring, no doubt, as this continues to ride up the coast. Here's your I kind of I think I actually picked up the uh, yeah the actual feels like temperatures. Let me let me take this uh, my my uh, my picture off here so you can kind of see a better a better display of the actual feels like temperatures. But yeah, man, look at that. I mean, we're talking you know single digits for a lot of these areas up in, up in the northeast. So those temperatures and those feels like temperatures give me like I said, it's gonna be a noticeable shock to the system. Anywhere in the 20s here, your feels like to the body is going to be below freezing. So it's a definitely a cold shot uh, that's going to be coming uh, on the table. And by the time we get into the third, yeah, that continues to modify, but that colder push just pushes it a little bit further to the east. And a lot of these areas along the coast are still going to be impacted from frost, if not freezing temperatures, especially as where that snow is going to be flying in, into the northeast by the time we get into next uh, Saturday, April the 3rd. And as we get into the 4th, yeah, the colder push uh, modifies. So we're talking possibly a, a, a three to almost four day event of some much colder uh, temperatures that's going to be uh, impacting much of the Pacific Northwest, getting into the central U.S. and eventually getting into the southeast and to the eastern parts of the U.S. as we end March and as we go into uh, April. And here's your snow. Uh, that's going to be from that snowstorm. Yeah, we could be talking anywhere from you know, two to four inches and much of, uh, you know, West Virginia getting into uh, Pennsylvania here. Pittsburgh could pick up uh, an inch or two from this. Much of State College could be picking up, say, four inches. Williamsport, maybe three. Get into Scranton, say, three inches. But uh, as you get up to upstate New York, some of your bullseye into Syracuse, into uh, Albany. I mean, some of those higher elevations are going to be picking up anywhere from a bullseye. Could be picking up eight to ten inches uh, from this system. Getting into Vermont, getting into New Hampshire, especially as you get into uh, Maine here with a good two to four inch swath. And yeah, as you get into uh, portions of uh, southeastern Canada, yeah, some of these places could be picking up a foot of snow uh, from this system. And here's your rainfall uh, just over the next, uh, you know, five to six days. I mean, unfortunately, all that rain you picked up in Tennessee here, we got more rain coming for you guys as well. So this is not a good setup. A lot more rain on the table. And then you got freezing temperatures to end all this mess. So you're going to be seeing a huge transition uh, in the weather. But man, look at all this rain that's just going to continue to be inundated. Uh, a good chunk of the southeast going up to the uh, portions of Virginia, going into the Pennsylvania, all up the coast here of the I-95 quarter. So that's why I mentioned there's going to be a lot of precipitation you're going to be working with. So how much of that cold air is going to be penetrating and could even a changeover uh, possibly along the coast? We'll just have to see. But it's going to be mainly an interior event uh, for the snowstorm. So 
Hey, I know we had a lot to cover this uh, this uh, morning, so I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Uh, do like this uh, video. Definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where I protect you before and after the storm.